chair of the implementation task group within the International Standards Organization, ISO, working group social responsibility, writing the ISO 26,000 standards published in November 2010. He's scientific head of the postgraduate education at the University of Applied Sciences in Vienna for CSR. Uh, has also lectured at the San Skyl Management Institute in Switzerland and coaches at the CO level. He is the author of several books on CSR, such as Corporate Social Responsibility, Leitfaden, Konzepte, Management, and Dangerous Business Unternehmen. This was published in 2004 as the first German language book on the issue. And also he published in Huntington Corporate Citizenship in 2007. He is also the author of a guidance book on how to implement corporate social responsibility. Together with the Austrian Standards Institute that has been translated this guide into six languages so far.
see. Now, the consequence out of that is, you might have followed it, the US government fined BP for 7.3 billion US dollars for uh, eco ecological damage, for economic damage to the fishers, uh, etc., etc. So, if I do a mass calculation, uh, 7.3 billion I have spent, I saved 180,000, so my minus is <laughs> 7.1 billion. Shareholders might not be too happy about it uh, because it's their money again with, what, with which the final has to be paid to the US government. So the reason that stake as management was doing is just looking at the economic sphere of the activity, cutting $180,000. Okay, the, the valve has never broken before, so we can cut it, but not taking into account uh, potential costs of environment and society. short term. I can exploit natural capital and on the short term to raise my profits, return on investment, if that's my key driver, but the resource will end at some stage and what will it be then? Then I have no return on investment. I have a failure. So what we see today, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm a little bit like a missionary in the 16th, 17th century. I just came from Nigeria where uh, missionaries played a big role in 
actually the main uh, thing I want to address also here is what we're doing now is we're looking at these financial manufacturers' capital and we're measured by that. The managers are measured in their bonuses and their success by how much manufacturers' capital, financial capital they produce. If the company is dropping in their profits, they lose their job or at least they have uh, problems, they increase, then they will be perceived as successful managers. The question is, for what term, how long? Uh, we have the issues of managers only being elected for or selected for five-year contracts, and what's after that, they don't care. So decisions are not necessarily taken on the long-term view, but on a very short-term uh, perspective. We need to look at all the capital stocks, and we need to uh, create value that addresses the social, the, the intellectual, and the natural 
never gotten it in the boardroom. So they had to go to uh, this uh, daycare center to get that uh, idea and see this need in society. So how can we address these challenges? How can we uh, look at ahead? How can we also use that to differentiate ourselves from our competitors? And then are the guys who are the transformers. to it, but 
actually, left and right, uh, <coughs> they were overtaken by the guys in digital photography with a new technology, with innovation in photography. So moving from film to uh, digital uh, photography. So we got better and better, but we missed out on the innovation. So today Kodak, at some stage they went bankrupt. Now they're a small uh, part, actually their biggest business currently is producing films for X-ray machines. So from the synonym for photography to producing films for X-ray machines is a journey that is a result of exactly this year. So we're only looking at continuous improvement. I have a, I have a picture I use, uh, and that's going to be the title of my next book. The, the, story, the story of the horse and the elephant. Uh, the, I have two goats. So <laughs> the, uh, the, the horse Thank you. 
where we want to move. A lot of companies are stuck here, and we need to get them there. The tools are governance, stakeholder engagement, and optimization, which leave them to uh, close to the design team to collect information and partnerships. That, in the end, can lead to uh, transformation. <coughs> so that's, that's where, where the process was. They have this uh, global risk analysis, <coughs> and this is the last one that uh, exists. And you will find a lot of different things, food shortages, crisis, water supply, chronicle, fiscal, balance, terrorism, uh, I don't know, rising religious fanatics, uh, land and water usage, and cyber attacks, uh, etc. etc. Uh, now, if you're a business leader,
more than there are participants in the ISO General Assembly. So uh, you can just see also which is an indicator for the great interest and the great need for such a kind of a standard on how to implement social responsibility into your system and what it's about. I guess if you like to be frank about it. Most people don't. Uh, the, this is nine pages in one slide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, it took us two years to make <laughs> because we're not famous. <laughs> uh, this is what the, the basic thing about ISO 20000 is, is, is a one stop shop. It is what is social responsibility? The definition. Uh, what are the principles of social responsibility? So what does an organization need to look at? What are the core subjects? What are the impacts that they have? And how to address them? And finally, the process on how to implement social responsibility in the organization. So we have the full spectrum from definition, principle, core subject, to how do I do it in one document. So I think that's big. something that helps the society, then I cannot earn money by the way that I destroy the society or the okay. people. So it's for me, it's sticking to the principle. That would be a contradiction by the logic. Okay, now let's hear an argument from those who thought, yes, they should be able to do this. You have your hand up. Yeah, I think we agree with it, yeah. Because if you think about it, you might end up with everything that you do that you might hurt society in any way or hurt. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yes, where do you draw the line? Uh, alcohol, we talked about I alcohol. Think, yeah. uh, <laughs> al alcohol is probably even a bigger killer than tobacco. Uh, okay, yeah. in, the, in the consequences, like, I don't 
actually, to be honest, <laughs> the tobacco industry is ahead of the pack because they are in spotlight, they are under pressure, and they have to do things. I would be very happy if some other industries would be as good as the tobacco industry <laughs> in that, because simply because they're not on the radar, so they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Nobody's paying any attention to them. So the tobacco industry is in the spotlight, so actually they're doing much better than uh, most other
say this for a market instead of uh, instead of liberating this market. And by destroying the market, then the point came out of who are the shareholders, who are the stakeholders. So I think the, the thing is that there is a mix going on there. Absolutely. And instead of saying how to create a market that works, and that is the standard in part of how to create a working market.
to announce uh, something for tonight, for the social event. There will be buses right in front of, of the building to pick us up at 6.15. 